Back to the Future Part 2. What a great movie. My favorite of the trilogy. Time Traveling DeLoreans. Hoverboards. How awesome was the hoverboard? Not this piece of shit. Get that out of there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You got crazy old Doc Brown. The beautiful girlfriend Jennifer, who later turned into Elizabeth Shue. Locksness Monster Channel. This is Super Back to the Future 2 review. Where's my roar? Now when I was growing up, we didn't get good Back to the Future games. That seemed to be the status quo. If it was a good movie, they'd rush out a game that wasn't that great. Luckily, they turned out a pretty decent game in Japan. Super Back to the Future 2 for the Super Famicom was developed by Deft and released July 23rd, 1993. The game starts with a tutorial and then you get a cutscene, which happens at the end of each level and they are done really well. It basically tells the same story as part 2 of Back to the Future where Marty has to go back and save his son. Now his weapon of choice this time around is the hoverboard, and believe me, this thing is really fun to use, although difficult. Looking at some online reviews, I agree with Destructoid.com and when they said that, with the spin attack, the ability to jump, and a button for gaining speed, you have to navigate a labyrinth of levels of increasing difficulty, and then wind up beating a really easy boss at the end. You know, the game doesn't always feel like it was designed with the hoverboard in mind. The hoverboard does give you speed, not sonic speed, but it doesn't make any sense that the camera is zoomed in so close to you. You can't see what's in front of you, and you'll have to repeatedly stop as the screen scrolls. It kind of feels like you're playing on a Game Boy sometimes. The further you get, the less safe you always feel. You're always worried that there's going to be an enemy or some kind of spike wall in front of you. I never felt safe going top speed after the third level. Throughout each level, there's a lot of coins that you have to collect, and collecting as many as you can is essential to beating this game. You have to store up your power-ups, your health, your one-ups, and these can all be purchased in vending machines. Simplistic yet satisfying boss battles, usually against Biff, and I really like the attention to detail. It really looks like a scene out of the movie. It's usually just environmental damage or you just have to wait for the right time to jump on the boss's head. Like I said, easy, but, you know, enjoyable. Some of these parts are the definition of Nintendo hard. You have to get really good with the hoverboard really fast, you have to get your accelerating and your jumping down, and you have to be able to stop on a dime in some parts. Getting up these cars was incredibly frustrating, and this isn't the only part where you have to get higher up in the level to advance. Now, with the controller gripes aside, this game really is enjoyable. It's your standard platform where you have to get A to B, beat the easy boss, but this game is also beautiful to look at and the music is incredible. The art style, you can clearly tell it's made in Japan with the large heads, the very colorful sprites, and the music, whoever the composer was, did a fantastic job from the opening theme of the Back to the Future movie to each level's own musical tracks. It's not from the movie directly, but it sounds like it belongs. I really, really, really love this soundtrack. 
Now, I said Nintendo hard already, and I did mean it for the later levels, too. The levels are just long enough where you'd expect at least one save spot, and there's nothing worse than dying over and over and over again on the same enemy, only to finally beat them and realize you were like 10 seconds away from beating the level anyway. This game could have really used some save spots or check marks, but, you know, I, I like the difficulty. It was gratifying when you beat the level. Now, like most games in the 90s, they give you passwords at the end of each level, and believe me, I wrote down a lot of passwords during my playthroughs of this game. But they also give you the passwords if you just want to watch the little cutscenes, which I thought was a nice addition. The positives more than outweigh the negatives. Just the theme music alone is worth it sometimes. It's a fun platformer where you go A to B, fight a boss, and the story plays out via fun cartoon cutscenes. Although they are in Japanese, it's pretty easy to follow along, even if you've seen the movie just once. So I have to wonder why Super Back to the Future 2 was only released in Japan. I really enjoyed it. And if you think about how much it must have cost for Toshiba to get the rights from Universal 4 Back to the Future, it just doesn't make sense. Well, you know, next time somebody says that all movies don't have good video games, you can tell them Super Back to the Future 2 is pretty damn cool. So overall, I had a lot of fun with Super Back to the Future 2. It's a real shame that it never had a proper release here in North America. I highly recommend this game. Go out and try and find yourself a copy today.